So what can we anticipate from former rugby hero Elliot Green in terms of his transgender status? Elliot Green talked out about his mental health struggles in retirement while speaking at an international forum in Canada on eradicating homophobia and transphobia in sport. He hoped that becoming public about his transition would motivate others to do the same. Here's all we know thus far. To begin with, let's look at what we know about the gold medalist Elliot Green popping up as trans man. Before becoming majorly famous in Australia for his ability in the sport, Elliot Green knew at a young age that the gender given at birth might be unique or far distant from their identity. Green required several years to express his ideas completely. Nonetheless, the star of Australia's gold medal winning women's rugby sevens team from the 2016 Olympics is now discussing how his gender identification has resulted in a significant transition in his life. Green, who has retained the same name, described his choice to transition as the finest decision of his life during an international forum on confronting transphobia and homophobia in sport. Caitlyn Jenner and Quinn, who went by one name and were part part of Canada's winning soccer team in Tokyo 2020 are the only transgender or gender-diverse Olympic gold medalists besides Green. While more athletes are coming out about their sexuality and identity, gender inequalities exist in professional sports. These athletes have been the focus of derogatory comments and online abuse, particularly at the highest level, where social media is closing the gap between players and spectators, as we've seen since World Rugby decided to exclude transgender women from playing women's rugby. These activities, however, have only increased athletes' eagerness to participate in the hope that others would be inspired to do the same. Green, in particular, intended to underline the effect that World Rugby's proposal may have on young children who no longer see themselves represented on a playing field. More disturbing, according to ABC, more than 40% of transgender adolescents have considered suicide. Following that, more specifics on the subject. Green, 29, confesses to being in a sad place after retiring from rugby at the end of 2021. That's exactly what happened to me, he said. My rugby career was almost gone, and I'd been in an out of large mental health facilities, she continues. My agony had reached unparalleled proportions. Green admits that he and his fiancée, Vanessa Turnbull Roberts, and their little daughter, Watui, emerged stronger and happier due to the ordeal. He said, Vanessa was pregnant and had to go to the hospital. I was going through a difficult time. That is the last time she will see me in that state. However, talking about it is the best way to help heal. I'm hoping that by sharing my story, someone may feel less alone. Green said he was aware as a youngster that he did not identify with the gender assigned to him at birth. As a kid, I recall believing I was a boy in public since I had a short haircut and whenever we met new people, they believed I was a guy," he said. Green struggled with mental illness and came to terms with his identity until he retired from rugby in November 2021. I spent a lot of time at home in a dark room when I resigned from Australian rugby because I didn't have the bravery to meet people," he said in a summit video. Next up, following a dual tournament world rugby agreement, Stansport will become Australia's home of the Rugby World Cup. With the announcement of their comprehensive collaboration, World Rugby and Stansport have provided Australian sports fans with a single reliable source for Rugby World Cup coverage. The agreement, made in advance of Australia's rugby championship match against South Africa on Saturday, adds to the streaming giant's extensive portfolio of existing international and domestic rugby rights, cementing its position as Australia's home of rugby. As part of a comprehensive content package that provides unrivaled access to the biggest events in rugby, sports fans will be able to watch live and uninterrupted coverage of every match from Rugby World Cup 2021 women's and Rugby World Cup 2023 men's. With 45 days until the world's finest women's teams meet in New Zealand, Stan will bring fans closer to the action. The Wallaroos will open off their campaign against champions New Zealand on 8th October at Eden Park in front of what might be a record crowd for a women's test match. Fans will be able to interact with the tournament in new ways thanks to additional special content. The finest men's teams in the world will take center stage next year when France hosts the Rugby World Cup 2023, an event that is expected to break all previous attendance records. The Wallabies began their quest for a third Webb Ellis Cup on September 9th against Georgia, and Stan will bring fans closer to the action with a comprehensive multimedia offering. Wallabies matches, including the final, will be broadcast live on the Nine Network. Moving on, the Rugby World Cup Sevens 2022 and Child Fund Cooperation will assist thousands of African youth. The 2022 Rugby Cup World Sevens has joined forces with Child Fund to better the lives of kids and young adults all around Africa. As the first-ever philanthropic collaboration for a Rugby World Cup Sevens, Child Fund and World Rugby have now collaborated on three consecutive Rugby World Cups, benefiting over 50,000 children worldwide. Child Fund is scheduled to fund a Rugby Sevens Festival in Cape Town this September, having already been named as principal charity partners of the Rugby World Cup 2021 in New Zealand and the Rugby World Cup 2019 in Japan. Child
Child Fund believes in the power of sport to change children's lives, and its Rugby for Development initiative, Child Fund Rugby, implements a variety of innovative and award-winning sports for development curricula, allowing children and young people from disadvantaged communities to play, learn, and lead. The organization has also been at the center of fundraising projects such as Race to Rugby World Cup 2021, a challenge in which Ron Rutland and Adam Nunn cycle from Japan to New Zealand in preparation for the Rugby World Cup 2021. To commemorate the partnership's launch, Child Fund created a short video highlighting a partnership in South Africa using the Reconnect curriculum. Its purpose is to encourage children and young people to play and coach rugby while learning key life skills such as supporting gender equity and setting goals. Following that, Liam Wright has signed a one-of-a-kind contract with the Queensland Reds. Wright has played five tests for the Wallabies since making his Reds debut in 2018, the most recent being against Argentina in 2020. Liam is a crucial member of the Queensland Reds, and his instinct has always been to put the team first, said Queensland Reds rugby general manager Sam Cordingly. Despite his primary focus on Queensland and making the national squad, Liam has earned the opportunity to pursue international playing opportunities throughout his contract. The Reds' commitment to Liam in 2023 and 2024 is admirable. Wright has established himself as one of the Reds' most prominent executives, and he and James O'Connor will lead the team to the Super Rugby AU title in 2021. He was named co-captain after missing only five games due to injury in 2022. It gives me great pleasure to say that I will remain with the Reds for the next two years, Wright went on. The enthusiasm and pride of donning the Queensland shirt inspire me greatly, he said. Injuries have merely served to fuel that ambition over the last two seasons. I've had the good fortune to play in every game for Queensland. I am happy to continue on the route we have chosen as players, staff, and Queenslanders to improve this great club, he added. It's been a pleasure working with you. I'd like to thank everyone who has helped us, especially Brad, Sam, and the rest of the Reds, and I'm excited to see where we go from here. Finally, loosehead Harry Bella has been added to the ACT Brumbies Super Rugby Pacific squad. Since joining the Brumbies Pathways program in September last year, Bella has greatly impacted ACT rugby, excelling as loose head for Canberra Royals in the bent-spoke John I. Dent Cup. Bella was a standout at the schoolboy level, representing Australia at the U18 level twice in a row in 2018 and 2019, and was a part of Junior Wallabies teams in 2020 and 2021 that did not play due to COVID. Brumbies prop from ACT. I'm delighted for the chance to represent the ACT Brumbies, Harry Bella stated. Coming down from Queensland has been huge for my growth, practicing with players like James Slipper and going against Alan Ala Alatoa in training. It's been incredible. I know I have a lot of work to realize my ambition of playing super rugby, but I'm enjoying it and can't wait for next season. It's fantastic to have Harry locked in for next season, said ACT Brumby's head coach Stephen Larkham. Harry's a guy with huge talent who thrived at that school's level, and we're happy that his path has taken him to the ACT, where we feel he has all the attributes to play super rugby. We have two terrific young loose heads to develop for the future and the present, in Fred Cahia and Harry, and with Dan Palmer's tutelage, Harry should be ready to go for 2023. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.